Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Tuesday on the House of Horror. I'm Devin Does Reviews 1, and today I'm going to just do a, a short synopsis of a film that we watched over the past week. Um, this is probably about the only horror film that I've watched over the past week that hasn't been reviewed on the channel. Um, I watched a lot of classics like The Exorcist and Exorcism of Emily Rose and um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Blu-ray, and I really wanted to review those. Those have been reviewed before, so... Let's go ahead and just talk about this little film that um, I don't think has been talked about on here, and I haven't really seen a whole lot um, said about this in the community or on YouTube in general, and this is The Vampire Journals. Um, this is a full moon release from, um, I think, about 1998 or 1999. Um, this is technically part of the subspecies um, series. It kind of goes in between um, three and the possibility for a four. I'm not sure if four ever came out or not. I know in 1998 they were really talking about trying to do a part four, um, if it did, it, it really did slip past me. Um, but this is actually from Ted Niccolo. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, written and directed by him and produced by Charles Band, as are most all full moon pictures. And this was a really intriguing vampire movie. Uh, very low budget. Uh, very, very slow moving for a vampire movie. Um, this isn't one of those really fast paced uh, gore fests for sure. Um, as are most uh, Full Moon Pictures, most of them are pretty slow moving and, and they take their time to develop the characters and they usually have really good um, 80s kind of atmospheres and this is definitely no exception to that rule. Um, but yeah, this is just a really wonderfully acted, uh, wonderfully scripted uh, film. Um, it's, it's almost kind of a ripoff of um, Interview with a Vampire in a way, um, but, but completely different. Um, basically the entire film is narrated by the main character who was a vampire um, seeking revenge on the entire bloodline of um, the vampires that um, basically changed him into a vampire hundreds of years ago. And there's only one vampire left, and he's the most powerful of, of all the vampires because he is the very first one that started this bloodline. And um, the one um, that, that started the bloodline, his name is Ash, and um, he kind of has this obsession with um, old Baroness-style women and music. And so... Um, the main character basically um, stalks all these um, opera clubs and, and places where these women are playing music and, until he comes across this vampire, and he does. And um, he actually ends up falling for um, this woman, Sophia, who um, Ash, the, the bad guy, um, basically falls in love with too. And so there's this really, um, this really good dynamic um, between all three of the characters. It's, it's almost kind of a, a, a love triangle, but um, Sophia actually... Um, isn't in love with Ash. Um, she's being held against her will um, in his castle, um, which is actually beneath um, this nightclub that he owns. And I really like this. This is very um, old school gothic, um, not like your new new wave type gothic. Um, very uh, Phantom of the Opera ish type gothic. Just very 15th century Dark Ages style type stuff. Um, and that's really my kind of vampire movie. Um, I would compare this to um, a low-budget version of, like, a Bram Stoker's Dracula kind of film. Um, and that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about the subspecies series as well. Um, I've only seen three of those. Again, I'm not 100% sure whether or not a fourth one ever came out of the subspecies movies. Um, but I know that I did hear talk years ago about a fourth one. Um, they're kind of really hard to get a, a hold of these days. I know um, there's a box set out of the subspecies films, um, and this is not actually technically a part of that box set. Um, as, as I said, again, it's, it's a standalone movie, but it's a tie-in to the subspecies um, series. I think what they were trying to do was bring some new characters into the game and try to tie everything together, because I think that the bloodline that, um, that created um, the main character in this film, I think that they are from the uh, bloodline that the main character in the subspecies trilogy is from. And um, I really like um, the vampire in the old subspecies films, because he's very... Um, Nosferatu-ish, uh, very much like the old 1922 um, Nosferatu-style vampire with the long ears and the really pale, long face um, and, the, and the really long um, fingernails. And I really, really dig those kind of vampires. Those, to me, are, are the true vampires. Um, and and this, this was kind of like that, too. Now, you're not really seeing so much the long fingernails um, and that kind of thing because this film actually takes place in modern-day society. Um, but still, again, it has that really... Um, kind of high society overseas kind of uh, in Europe kind of feel and I think most of this film was actually filmed in Europe too which is kind of interesting but yeah this is definitely worth a pickup if you ever see this um, I picked this up I think for ten dollars at FYE um, it was kind of a blind buy in a way um, and then when I got it home I, I realized that, that it was a part of the um, kind of like I said again kind of a part of the subspecies series so um, 
I really don't know why I put off watching this for so long. I really shouldn't have, because this was a very, very good movie. Um, not a very fast-paced film, so if you're really into those fast-paced um, kind of vampire movies, you're probably not going to like this. But if you liked Interview with a Vampire and, and uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, um, the one with Anthony Hopkins and Keanu Reeves, if you like a slower, um, character-built, um, kind of almost drama with, with vampire story, then this, this movie is definitely for you. You've got to check it out. Well, thanks for checking us out, and we will catch you next week.